So I was just testing a shot this morning and messing with exposure, seeing what worked best. And I'm gonna run through a couple different ways to do this. So right off the bat, this shot looks way too dark for me personally. It's just natural light. I'm not using any artificial light source right now. On my camera, the exposure meter is telling me this is a plus one. To me, this image looks way underexposed for me personally. And this is where having a tool like a monitor comes in handy and being able to use false color or zebra. So the camera is telling me it's a plus two on the exposure meter. Generally speaking, this is probably where I would put it. However, I want to test going even hotter than this. This is kind of the exposure level I want to test because it looks way too bright. But then when you plug it into editing software, that kind of changes. What I'm finding is you can just pull down your shadows and make this image look really nice with a really minimal effort. So now I have an artificial light source outside the window. On my monitor, this shot looks properly exposed. It looks good to my eye. When I pull up zebras, I'm not getting any. False color looks accurate. Generally speaking, when I'm lighting a face, I want to see some zebra on this side. And I'm not really getting any, so I'm going to have to go higher than that. This looks a little bit better. This is probably where I would put it. But then still, I'm not getting any zebra reading on my face. Based on zebras in this shot, this is an accurate exposure. However, when I do false color, it's telling me it's a little bit too hot still. Now I'm way overexposed. If you looked at the shot on the monitor, you would wonder if my eyes worked. When you actually go to color grid this footage, it's a little bit of a different story. I'm getting full zebra on the right side of my face, yet false color is telling me it's too hot. So all of these tools are basically just giving you information. The exposure meter, zebras, and false color. What I'm also just using is feel and my eye because I know what this overexposed image will look like when I go and plug it into my computer. Okay, so now I'll bring in this footage into Premiere to do a basic color correction. This is the shot that looked good in the monitor, but then when you plug it into Premiere or whatever software you're using, it's a little bit of a different story. You can see on the waveform, it's not a very balanced image. And then when you try to bring up your exposure, you almost don't have enough. So this is, this is a workable image, but it's not great. I would say this, I wouldn't be personally happy with this. There's actually a lot of noise when you kind of zoom in. This shot is roughly how I've been exposing my footage for a while now. You can see the waveform looks pretty balanced here, and then you can just bring down shadows a little bit, bring up exposure. Again, this is just natural light coming in from the window. And now for the thing I really wanted to test. So you see the waveform comes in a lot higher here in general, and then bring down your shadows to somewhere in here, maybe even a little bit lower. And then even that right there is a pretty good workable, usable image just from tweaking shadows. And then you zoom in and like, not really any noise. So this is just Premiere. Um, we're not color grading with DaVinci or anything using nodes, but I'm pretty happy with this image. And then I would say this is pretty consistent as well. Again, just being able to drag your shadows down from there to there, and then just basically have an image that's good to go versus this, where you're starting out dark and then trying to go bright. You can see this way works worse because you're trying to go up and it won't even allow your exposure to become balanced, where this is the opposite where you're going up to down and it ends up being more balanced in the end. Now I'm going to look at the footage from the artificial light source. This is the shot with technically proper exposure but to me is underexposed. Um, when you do a little bit of a color grade here, let's go back to our color tab. Again you see the waveform way down there and then you try to bring it up and it doesn't look amazing. Again, you see the waveform way down there, so you try to bring up your highlights. But then when you bring down your shadows is where you kind of get into trouble, and you're seeing lots of noise in here. So right in here, we're starting to get a little bit warmer. You can do more of this technique where you're just bringing down exposure, and then maybe boosting your highlights a little bit. Again, this is what it looks like straight out of my camera. Here is a shot that... I wanted to test at the end that I would technically say is overexposed. On my monitor, it looks way too bright. Again, like if someone saw this shot on the monitor, 
they would think your eyes don't work. But then bring down your shadows all the way down here. Bring up your highlights a touch. And that's kind of it. Look how balanced our waveform is. So like this is the whole premise of talking about this. I've been slowly increasing my exposure with this camera. I like how this shot looks and to get it, you technically have to overexpose and have a shot that looks like this straight out of camera. To get even more technical, I guess, this isn't really what the shot looks like out of camera because it has a conversion LUT on top of it. Um, in my monitor and my camera, I'm using a LUT to show what it will look like, but really like this is what your shot looks like straight out of your camera. And again, like look at this waveform. The waveform looks really balanced. So then when you add your LUT, which is layer one, and you add your correction, you have a really nice looking shot with not a lot of effort to tweak it. So this is really the, the information that you're looking for because this is what the image in the camera actually is. Look at this waveform versus a waveform where I underexpose or technically expose correctly. The waveform is way down here versus here where you overexpose and it's way more in the middle. Now I have my timeline in DaVinci and I'm gonna go through and color correct in here. Side note, there's a really good channel on YouTube. I think the guy's name is Colin Kelly and he has a lot of good information on color grading in DaVinci. This was our shot that was properly exposed. So now I'm gonna go through and correct it to my liking. A lot of noise over here. I think it looks fine. Let's see what happens when we apply this to the other clips. So here's kind of where I would normally expose. And you can see even in DaVinci, just from bringing down shadows now, I feel like this image looks pretty good. I had a little bit of contrast. It definitely looks better. Still, still some noise going on, but definitely less. Okay, now this shot, super overexposed. If you look at the waveform, it's very hot. But then you grab shadows and come down quite a bit and even bring down highlights to somewhere in here. I'm not even going to touch contrast because I kind of like the way it looks right here. And it looks a lot better than our first shot, which was somewhere in here. Compare the two, like look at how much noise is in here versus the other one and look how much better the skin tones look in here you know this this shot to me looks good i would say this is the first time i've been able to say throughout making this that this is like a good looking shot that i would be happy with that doesn't look right but then it's a different story when you start to add your color grade to it so i guess that's my tip overexpose your s log sony footage generally speaking i think it likes being overexposed more than people even think it does. That's all I got for you. Peace.